Now, President Muhammad Ubuari has felicitated with Christian brothers and sisters in particular, and by extension, all Nigerians as they celebrate Christmas. The President enjoined all Nigerians to imbibe and demonstrate the essence of the season of love, goodwill among all the ethnic groups in the country, giving and sharing, strengthening the bonds of brotherhood and good neighborliness, and focusing on all that binds us together as one united country. He therefore urged compatriots to shun all actions which negate the spirit of the season. And joining us in the studio is a policy analyst, Ifi Onyebule. Good to have you. Nice to be here. Welcome. Thank you for you know, inviting me. Yes, it's always good to have you. I mean, so um, what are your thoughts? First of all, let's begin with uh, the president's speech, uh, greeting, so to speak. You... The president has done what um, is expected mm -hmm. of the father of the nation, mm -hmm. as it is. I like that idea of asking people to shun, uh, you know, anything that, that negates or that would threaten the peace mm -hmm. that Nigeria has. But when you talk about Nigeria having peace, um, I think it's relative. Um, the president needs to go beyond the rhetorics of, mm. you know, just talking about it. He needs to exhibit some of these things that he says mm -hmm. with the actions that he takes. If you look at it, I, I don't think we want to go into all of this discussion. It's Christmas Day. We're supposed to have fun and enjoy mm -hmm. ourselves and, you know, preach peace at it, as it is. But when you look at it, the way and manner that the president has actually, um, you know, announced appointments and all of that, mm -hmm. people are aggrieved. People are not happy the way it is going. You're making it now look like one particular sect or mm -hmm. part of the country is more important than the other mm -hmm. and I think these are the kind of things that rob us of the peace mm -hmm. that we're talking about because everyone is a stakeholder in this country called Nigeria mm -hmm. once you're qualified it doesn't have to matter where you're from we're all Nigerians and I think I want to wake up to see that they were everyone as long as you're a nigerian you're first seen as a nigerian instead of coming from the north south east or west mm -hmm. that's where i want to say i totally agree with you ify and just you mentioned appointment it will bring me to the next uh, question we want to talk about women participation you know in politics now hardly has any uh, year been as politically anticipated and heated as this year uh, the election year in nigeria in spite uh, of the level of political awareness that trailed the last elections it has been that much needs to be done to encourage the participation of women in politics, which I know you agree. And now, if you uh, tell us, you know, taking a look at the year that is almost ending, how do you assess, you know, women participation in politics? Uh, we're not there yet. You know, the women have been talking and they're going, they've gone beyond talking, I tell you. And when you look at it, Nigeria is a country that, that exhibits women that are you know making giant strides mm -hmm. in various sectors i tell you is it about engineering just name it you find that women are doing so well mm -hmm. but when you look at it we have a society we have a culture that stifles the woman you need to understand what it is the patriarchal nature of nigeria is something that stifles the woman mm -hmm. you want to step out to go do something they tell you look it's night do you want to go for a meeting at night mm -hmm. so i think I think in politics, they need to also look at ways of doing some of these things in, in broad daylight, in the daytime, so that women can be part of it. I'll give you an instance. In the course of my career, mm -hmm. I've managed about two very big radio stations as it is. And I just want to give you an idea of what it is that the average Nigerian man thinks. Mm -hmm. But there are great men who encourage women, who are happy to work with women. Absolutely. In those places, one of the places, when I got to resume there, someone said to me, why would they go and bring this young woman from Lagos to come manage mm. a radio station? But I had to put my foot down and I said to them, look, I'm here to do a job. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the job with me or you want to go? I had to draw the line. Are you with me or I'm against not. me? You decide what it's going to be. So I put it down mm -hmm. and I said to people, you don't run a place or run a ministry or do a job because of your genetic makeup. No, right. it is because of what it is you have in your head. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say to women, you've got to be five times better than a man before people see that look let's give this woman a chance. you know th that's that's the word i never even like to mm. use no one is going to give you the chance you've got to get out there and take it i was at a forum a young lady was talking about young women who want to come into politics mm -hmm. and they don't have people to encourage them and all of that and i say look you need to encourage yourself, yourself. first you need to step out i'm not for this idea of where women give us the forms uh, for half the price. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. When you want to compete in a world where you have men, you've got to 
act like a woman and think like a man mm -hmm. and I think that's the way that, that, that that's the way forward if you've just answered my second question which mm -hmm. is the challenges that you know we have having to get women in uh, public offices so what's the way forward in your opinion and again citing the example of Obi Ezekwesli for instance who was you know the uh, female presidential candidate but she didn't go so far so to speak what are the lessons that we should learn from that when we talk about lessons learning lessons from that it still goes back to the initial thing I talked about mm -hmm. the men will never let you because there's this thing that's inside of them to say, why should a woman come to lead? Mm -hmm. Now, you've talked about Obi Ezekwesli. She's moved beyond where Mama Sarah Jubril used to be. Right. Remember her? Mm -hmm. You know, that was a woman that's now carrying the toga of one woman, one vote. Mm -hmm. And the one vote was just hers. And you ask the question, were there not women in that place who were supposed to vote? But we still have this idea of filing behind the men mm -hmm. because you think you'll get something from them when they get into office. The time has come for women to come together. You form a critical mass, that's the truth. And I know that when a woman is right there, she definitely will do well. I'll be someone that I've met one-on-one. -on -one. She's someone that mentors me from afar. She's someone that I respect, and I know that she would have done so well. Then again, she has her reasons for stepping down at that minute when mm -hmm. she did. But you talked about the lesson. What are the lessons learned? You need to understand that when you're in a competition with the men, mm -hmm. you've got to know that you're in that competition, you're all by yourself. The women might not file behind you. I also say that you've got to show competence that you can do this job. Mm -hmm. And that's why people will look at you someday and say, look, we need to support this person. And I'm thinking that Nigeria as it is today, they need to wake up. Things need to change. We hear the president, he talks about change, change, change. That change means changing the whole, you know, going 360 as it is. What we have now is not what we should be having. Mm -hmm. We need to begin to see new faces. I hear in Kwara State that the governor has gone beyond, you know, borders, bringing on young women to help him run the government. And I think others should also follow suit. Mm -hmm. Having said that, do you think there are chances, even though you don't like to use chances, but do you think we'll ever get to that point where we'll have women really elected to you know, uh, public offices, say governors, let's start from you know, having a female governor. Why not? Is it close? It's possible. It might not be close, but it's possible we're getting there. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling something is going to snap soon when you talk about Nigeria something will snap and people will wake up from their slumber. When you talk about women in politics in Nigeria, people begin to tell you about Desi and Alison. They call one, two, three women. They tell you about Patricia Ite mm. and all that. You can mention these women at the tip of your fingers, but you want me to give you a long list of men mm. who have failed, embarrassed, disappointed us as a country. Nobody sees that. Nobody talks about that. We have our millions, billions, trillions, you know, being frittered away. No one talks about that because it's the men. So I'm saying that that opportunity will come. I see it happening, maybe in the southwest, because mm -hmm. that's the most progressive. If you, if you ask me, I see it happening someday, right here from the southwest. There may be someday a female governor. But as I always say, do the job because you're competent, mm -hmm. you're capable, not because someone sees gender. you that you're a woman. Please, let's just give it to her. It doesn't work with me. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, when I work with you, don't look at me as a woman. Look at me as a what superior, as a supervisor, not even a boss. But if you want me to show you that I'm the boss, I definitely will show you that. And it's by performance. So I always tell women, whatever you do, be the best. So that when people encounter you, they understand that they've met someone mm -hmm. who can perform and, and do difference. it right on the job. Thank you so very much. Ifa, Thank for you for time. having me.